If I ask a question, and I, I would probably get several different answers, and, and maybe several different types of a, answers, on what does it take to really live for God? I could probably go down the line, and I, I, would, I would get uh, all kind of answers. Some may say, well, you know, you have to worship. Some others may say, well, you, you, you have to study the Word of God. Some would say you have to pray. So, you know, some, some would say you have to do this or you have to do that. And a lot, and, 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 and a lot of that's true. We, we need to study the Word of God. We need to pray. We need to worship. I, I was sitting in my office Sunday evening and meditating and praying for the Lord. And, 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 and I asked the question, I asked, Lord, what, 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 what does it take to live for you? I'm going to tell you what he quickened to my spirit. He said, it's a matter of the heart. It's a matter of the heart. And I thought, well, that, you know, that's pretty simple. But then I got to thinking about it. I got to thinking about it. It's a matter of the heart. On, the, on what the Bible teaches us about the heart. And tells us about the heart. You know, there, there, there are several scriptures that talks about it. As a matter of fact, there's uh, probably over a hundred scriptures in the Word of God that talks, maybe more than that, that talks about the heart. The Bible said, and, and you don't have to stand, but in Jeremiah 17 and 9, it says this. It says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know it? He said, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the rings even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So God searches the heart. Well, the first thing that, that we need to remember tonight is, is, is God knows our heart. Yes, he does. He said it's a matter of a heart or it's a heart thing. It's a matter of the heart mm -hmm. if we live for him. We know, though, that the Bible teaches us that we're to love Him. One of the first and great commandments is for us to love Him with all our heart. So if it's a matter of the heart, and I, and I can take care of, of loving Him with all my heart, all these other things that we might say that takes to live for God will fall into place. They'll fall in there. We'll do those things because it comes from the heart. I, 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 you know, uh, the Bible knows, you know, the, the one that truly knows our heart is the Lord. He said, I, I, I the Lord, search the heart. Mm -hmm. I search the heart. Knowing that the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked, God knew that man was going to have to have a change of heart. He knew, he knew, you know, uh, every one of us that comes to God, God has to do some kind of heart surgery on us. He has to do some kind of heart surgery on us. Now we need, I told somebody today, we were talking about it, I said, I said listen, if, if, if somebody says they're saved and they, there hasn't been a change in their heart or in their life, something's wrong. Amen. You know, something's wrong. Because when, when God, when God gives us that new heart, our life change, changes. The way we think changes. The way we act changes. The way we do changes. We realize it becomes a matter of the heart. See, in, in Ezekiel 18 and 31, he told them, he said, Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby you have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. He said, for why will you die, O house of Israel? So, so we realize, you know, uh, uh, there has to be a change of heart. There has to be a change in our life. Amen. There, there has to be a, 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 a new heart given unto us. And that's what happens when we receive the Spirit of God in our life. He, he, that, 
being born again, taking on that new nature. There's a change in us, or a change in, in, in our heart, in our lives. And because of that change, because it becomes a matter of, 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 of the heart, because we, we love God with all our heart, it's going to cause us to do our best to live right. Amen. If we can understand, if we can understand that, that it becomes a, a matter of the heart, we realize if my heart is right with God, if I really love God, I, I'm, I'm going to try my best to do things that pleases Him. Right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> what, does it take to, what, what does it take to live for God? It's a matter of the heart. See, there's something about it. If my heart's right, <coughs> Even even if I if I mess up, let's just say even if if I've wronged somebody, if my heart is right and established in God, then I'm going to do my when I realize that I've wronged somebody, mm -hmm. I'm going to do my best to make it right. Amen. Or if if I if I've sinned and and and. and and conviction comes to my heart and lets me know that, I, that I've sinned, then because my heart's right, because it's a matter of the heart, I'm going to do my best to, to repent until I get it right. Mm -hmm. See, if my, if, my, if my heart's right, it gets to the place that, that uh, all, all, all these other things around me, all the trivial things sometimes that we let get next to us don't amount to a thing. Because my heart's right. My heart's in tune with God. My heart's in touch with God. Yes. It becomes a heart thing. We, we, we complicate. We complicate our lives. We, we complicate living for God a lot of times. Simply, uh, and, and I won't put it bluntly, simply because we don't love God enough. Oh, come on. We complicate our lives simply because we don't love God enough. But if I, if I love him, I'm going to do my best to please him. Amen. That's why it becomes a matter of the heart. That's why it becomes a matter of, uh, of the heart and living. Uh, you know, I, I, wish, I, I wish there was some way I could get across to you the, the simplicity in serving God. Mm -hmm. When it's a heart thing. You know, I, instead of worried about this, worried about that, worried about, you know, uh, uh, someone else doing this or doing that, when I can get my heart right and I can stay in tune with God. You know, my heart's right and it's full of the Spirit of God. I said, if my heart's right and it's full of the Spirit of God, I. Come on. but let, let me just stop and say this. I've got to get my heart right for to be full of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First of all, I've got to get my heart right for it to be full of the Spirit of God. And if I, that don't mean I'm going to be perfect. That don't mean I'm not going to mess up from time to time. But that means that I'm going to have a repentant heart if I do. Amen. It's going to bother me if I mess up. It's going to bother me if I do somebody wrong. It's going to bother me. Yes, it will. If I slip and fall. And I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best to get back right because it's a, it's a matter of the heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I want my heart right with God. Amen. An old song that used to sing, If my heart is right, when he calls me. Yes. If my heart is right, I, I will hear. Right. If my heart is right when he calls me, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Yes. Praise right. God. Praise God. If we if we can keep that in mind, you know, at all times, it's a matter of the heart. Ezekiel will say, cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby you have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit, for why will you die, O house of Israel? Then Acts 8, chapter. The Bible said, but there was a certain man called Simon. Verse 9 which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that he, he himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. This was Simon. 
This was not Simon Peter, but this was Simon the sorcerer. And, and he had been bewitching the people with, with his sorceries that, that uh, had brought him some fame and possibly some fortune because of, because of the sorceries that he'd done. And they said, oh, he's got the great power of God. Well, you know, Simon liked that. He liked the attention. He liked the power. And to him they had regard because of that long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself was also baptized. Or he believed also, and when he, when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, Behold the miracles and signs which, he, which were done. Now he, he was seeing all these things. He was seeing the miracles and signs. And he, he had believed the preaching. He had believed the preacher, but there was something about it. His heart still wasn't right. Mm -hmm. Because he was watching. And I, I'm going to tell you, probably what he was looking at, when he began to see those miracles and signs, he was seeing dollar signs. Right. In his heart and his mind, because he ain't got his heart right yet. It said, now when the apostles were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Now, now here, here, I'm going to tell you, here, here's where uh, Simon began to mess up. See, I don't find a place where it said he received the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. He watched as if they laid hands on these others and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Mm -hmm. could, I, could I tell you and I thought, you know, I hope there's not anybody, anybody like that. But if our, if our only goal is, is, is to get some kind of recognition and fame, yeah. we're in it for the wrong reason. Right. We're in it for the wrong reason. Our heart's not right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Our heart's not right. <clears throat> See, he offered them money saying, give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. His motive was wrong. Have you, have you ever been around people, and I have, I've worked with people, that everything that they've done, there was a motive behind it. Every, you, knew, you knew everything. If they was nice to you, there was a motive behind it. Because most of the time they were mean to you. <laughs> but there was a motive behind everything that he did. Mm -hmm. This is kind of the way Simon was. There was a motive behind everything that he did. <clears throat> then Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Neither has thou has neither part nor lot in this matter, and notice what he said, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Amen. See, that's why it becomes a heart thing. That's why living for God becomes a heart thing. When our hearts right with God. When our hearts right with God. It becomes ninety percent easier to live for God. That's right. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna have our problems. You know, 
Everything's not, not, not always going to be good or road. We're going to have our, 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 our bad times. But if our heart's right, we're going to stick it out through the bad times till we get back to the good. Amen. If our heart's right. <clears throat> if our motives is right. He said, Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Verse 22, Repent therefore of this thy wickedness and pray, pray God if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. The thought of his heart may be forgiven thee. He said, Peter said, For I perceive that thou, thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. But his heart wasn't right. Mm -hmm. the, only, the only way that Simon would get forgiveness is that he repent and mean it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, listen, you come to God, you got to mean it. You come to God, you better mean it. Amen. You better mean it. There, 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 there is a, uh, again, we, we were talking today, and I, you know, I said, I said, a lot of people never understand the concept of being born again. That old, old Adam nature in us. It's what we're born with in the That's natural. Right. So we've got to be born again and that new nature put into us. There has to be a change in our life. There has to be a change of our heart. We take on the nature of God. We have to be born again. And part of that being born again is repentance. God, I'm sorry. Forgive me for my old life. Forgive me for my, my sins. Forgive me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I see sometimes, and it, you know, uh, some of some some of these televangelists or whatever you want to call it. You know, and it's all right if they, you know, what. what Quote the sinner's prayers as they say. And I'm standing there looking at it. I said, Oh God, show me some repentance somewhere. Mm -hmm. Show me some repentance somewhere. John, John the Baptist even said that he said, he said, bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. Amen. In other words, he was telling those Pharisees, you know, he said, Show me, show me that you've repented. Show some sign. You know what? You know what? You know what repentance is? It's getting that heart changed. Repentance is the beginning of getting that heart changed. <laughs> Show me some repentance. John preached. John about pre pre peace, repentance for the kingdom of, of heaven is at hand. Jesus preached it. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what Peter told Simon. He said, repent. Therefore, this, this thy wickedness. And pray God, that perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. So it becomes a matter of the heart. It becomes a matter of the heart. Praise God. When we, when we factor in all the things, you know, it's a simple, simple answer. It's a matter of the heart. How do I live for God? It's a matter of a heart. It's a, it's a simple answer, but there's so much involved in that answer when it becomes a matter of the heart. Hebrews 4.12 says this, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts 
and intents of the heart. This word is. This word is. This word. You know why? You know why sometimes when the word of God is read and when the word of God is, is preached, that it pricks your heart? Because it's a discerner. It's a, it's a discerner. That word is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And God looks. He, he, listen. God can look at your heart and know if you're ready to receive Him or not. You know what? You know why? You know why? Uh, it, it, some people it takes so long for them to be filled with the Holy Ghost. God looks at the heart. And he sees they're not ready yet. Somebody said, well, how do you get ready? Do a self-checkup. Repent. You know what, you know what we ought to do? You know what you if, if, if we ought to, and I, and I'm, we ought to want everything God got for us. Amen. And I believe God stands by his word. I know God stands by his word. Amen. So what do we do? You, 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 know, you know what we do? You believe we can obligate God with His Word? Yes, we can obligate God with His Word? He defeated, Jesus defeated Satan there when, when, when Satan came into the wilderness and tempted he, he defeated him with the Word. We can obligate God. You know, if, if uh, on the day of Pentecost when, when the Holy Ghost fell, no, the Bible said they were pricked in the heart. And they said, Many brothers, what shall we do? Well, Peter said unto them, Repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, what do I do if I, if I want to receive the Holy Ghost? I obligate God by repenting and being baptized. Because the Word says, If you do that, ye shall. You see, and, the, and, the, and there's other words. We, we can use the word in, in a lot of situations in our life. But, I have also, David wrote, he said, Thy word, O Lord, have I hid word in my, in my heart. Why? That I might not sin against thee. Might not sin against thee. And it becomes a matter of the heart. Hebrews 13 and 9. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. Not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. He said it's a good thing for the heart to be established with grace. For by grace are you saved. So it, becomes a, so it becomes a heart thing. We've got to have our heart established. And if my heart's right, if my heart's established, I love God like I should. If my heart is right, I love others like I should. If my heart is right, when I mess up, I'll fix it. You know, David, David, David had to pray that one time, you know, about his heart. Finally, he got to the place. He said, oh, God, my heart's fixed. My heart's fixed. I'll sing praises of the hands. If my heart is right when he calls me, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. If my heart is right. How do I live for God? It's a matter of the heart. Mm -hmm. If my heart is right, I'm going to want to please Him in every way that I can. It's not. It's not a hard thing. Some people, some people look at living for God, oh, I, you know, as, as as a list of to dos. 
They look at living for God as a list of to do. Or a list of things I have to do. But if my heart's right and I love God, it's a list of things I get to do. I get to do. I, I get to come to the house of God and worship Him. I get to love God with all my heart. I get to love others. I get to be kind and gentle. I get to help others. I get to do these things. It's not a have to. And you know, you, you hear people especially if you're not careful younger people, sometimes maybe older people too say yes. Well, i got to go to church Sunday. <laughs> My Lord. Well, it's Sunday. I guess we better go to church. Get your heart right. Get your heart right. Amen. You'll be saying, thank God it's Sunday. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I can go worship. I can go praise Him. But we don't have to wait till then. We can do like Sister Felicia was talking about. We can praise Him in our car on the way to work. Turn that music up on 99.3 or 88.3. I got to where I like 88.3. You would have thought it of an old man, would you? <laughs> <laughs> but so, you know, to worship him, to have my heart right. Praise God. And I want my heart right, church. Because if, if your heart is right, it makes life so much easier. Amen. If you don't remember anything about else about this message tonight, remember, if your heart is right, it makes life so much easier. Yes, it does. Why? Because in the heart, right, sin's out. Mm -hmm. And sin complicates your life. Let's all stand.